Joining us now, the second ranking Democrat in the Senate, member of the Judiciary Committee, Minority Whip, Whip Dick Durbin of Illinois. Uh, Senator Durbin, thanks so much for being on. Should the president declare a national state of emergency? Yes, I believe he should. All hands on deck. It's as Joe identified it. We've got to keep America safe. Speculating on how this started, when it started, where it started, and whether there were politics involved in it, leave that to the historians. At this moment, we want American families to feel safe and feel that we're doing everything within our power. The first thing I want is to make sure we have the test kits out and available. When the governor of Illinois calls me, calls my office, and tells me there's a shortage of these kits and the CDC is not providing them to my home state of Illinois, one of the first with an identified coronavirus victim, that to me is a, a need for a national emergency response. Why did we turn down the WHO offer of test kits that were being given to over why, 60 why, why nations did, why did around we, the Senator, world? Why, why did, I, Senator, why I did no we answer. do that? It has put us behind. Why did the president turn down test kits that would have allowed us right now to know who's infected, the extent of the infection, and how we limit further spread of the infection? Why? Joe. Joe, that's the question that's gone unanswered. I've gone to all my colleagues, Patty Murray and Chuck Schumer and others, and said, you've talked to people in the administration yourself. I have, too. I've never gotten an answer to that question. And I can just tell you this. CDC told me as much on the phone yesterday that they don't have the chemicals, the reagents, the enzymes necessary so that these test kits can be taken to a laboratory and actually processed. That, to me, is a breakdown, basic breakdown. If it takes a national health emergency to get beyond that and have the test kits we need, let's do it. So, so what do we do? What do you do specifically today to make sure that the people of Illinois, the people of Florida, Arizona, where they're a, a more, elderly, uh, more elderly population, what do you do as a United States senator to begin moving the president, moving the administration, moving the federal government forward more aggressively to get that testing out. And more importantly, to educate Americans, to let them know when they're going to be able to get a test, when their mother, when their grandmother, when their grandfather are going to be able to get those tests. Well, I can tell you that most of us are speaking out and reaching out to this administration to express our uh, concern, if not anger, over this current situation. We need to move and move quickly. Now, the president's announcement last night is worth looking at. I'm not going to judge it on its merits about uh, travel between uh, Europe and the United States. Europe does have a problem in Italy and it's anticipated in other countries. But let's get this right at home. Let's get this right at home. Figure out what it takes to make sure that these test kits are produced in a, in a timely manner as quickly as possible. Despite all the president's promises, it is not a fact. In my state of Illinois, we need more of these test kits, need them now, and I'm sure we're not the only uh, state facing that. Senator, it's Jonathan Lemire. A, crisis, a time of crisis like this requires, of course, both leadership and assistance from the federal government. So I wanted to ask you, first of all, just your take from the t of, about the tone from the president last night in his Oval Office address. But also let us know the sort of Senate, Senate Democrats' plan and where things stand right now with negotiations with your Republican counterparts in the White House uh, to helping Americans who are impacted by this virus. Well, our focus is really on the workers and the families and the seniors across America uh, who really have to be the first line of response to this pandemic challenge. Uh, the Illinois Restaurant Association comes in to see me, and I asked him, so what if a person in the back of the house has a fever and should be going home? Can they go home? Is it a situation that without a paycheck, they can't pay their rent, pay for their food and utilities? Shouldn't we have, as part of any response by the federal government, a guarantee that there is paid sick leave so that sick employee goes home as they should, not infecting other employees and customers and the public at large? Shouldn't we also have unemployment benefits ready immediately for those who lose a job when companies start throttling down because the economy is contracting? What we're looking at are the families first. Make sure they're taken care of and we do the right thing from a public health viewpoint. Sick leave and unemployment are the starting points for me. Hey, Senator, it's Willie Geist. You called just a minute ago for the president to declare a national state of emergency. Uh, governors have taken pains as they've declared states of emergency within their own states to say, this isn't a freak out. This frees up resources. It's an administrative That's question. Right. What would you say to the people who hear national state of emergency and do get very worried? 
all hands on deck. All the resources of our government uh, at the federal level as well as at the state level should be dedicated to responding to this as quickly as possible with the best in testing, uh, the best in medical care, the best in advice of what we do with our families in our daily activity. Uh, it really is a situation where we need to mobilize this nation behind it. I think a national state of emergency would achieve that. All right, Senator Dick Durbin, thank you uh, very, very much. And as he said, Joe, as we close out the show here, uh, all hands on deck. I think the bottom line is, politically, we are where we are. We are where we are in terms of uh, this virus coming to the United States. Um, and it's up to everybody to try and, and help out and follow the rules that the scientists are giving us. Yeah, well, I, I agree with what the president said last night that that we're all in this together. I, my greatest hope today is that the president heeds his own words yeah. and he moves forward accordingly, uh, declares a national emergency, gets those test kits out there so we can see the size and the scope of this pandemic problem in the United States and start aggressively working to contain it uh, as much as we can, or actually, I guess I should say mitigate it because we're well past containment because of the errors Jonathan Lemire already made by the United States government. There's no question. It'll be interesting to see the tone from the president today. We're not expecting to see or hear much from him. Uh, he does have one event today with the Prime Minister of Ireland. He's expected to address the press briefly then. But of note, after his Oval Office address last night, and though, we, though the vice president did make the rounds in the media this morning, there is no coronavirus briefing on the schedule today. You don't have to be a historian, Joe, to realize and have read about what happened after uh, December 7th, 1941 in America, where com cities like Detroit literally rebuilt uh, the country for uh, preparedness for war and getting ready for war and won the war. And you got to wonder today, listening to Dick Durbin, structurally, what has happened to the United States government that we are faced with this national medical emergency? We don't have enough medical test kits. We don't have enough respirators, so on and so on. Joe and Mika, you're going to yeah. see after last night's turning point, the NBA set a standard. The season has been suspended. I suspect the NHL will follow. You'll likely see the Major League Baseball season suspended in some way. This has changed America already. The question is, can we get it under control while we still have time? Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.